Welcome back to WNST, Tassin Baltimore and Baltimore Positive. Nothing more positive than talking about the future of our city. Don yeah. Moeller here. We're at State Fair, and uh, uh, we'll be back at Jennings soon. We'll be back at Fadley soon, hopefully putting together uh, more conversations as we head up to April 28th. But our, our good friends at Center Maryland are working on some opportunities. And, and I know you want to give Sarah Heminger some love. Give, give well, Sarah I some bet, love. Go ahead. I, my guess is we're with State Senator Mary That's, Washington. I'm good. I'm enjoying I, myself. I, I bet I, the senator has heard or knows of Sarah Heminger. I, I love the energy here. This is, this is I'm just... <laughs> I'm, I've never experienced anything Is that like caffeinated? That. Oh, there you, you go. Don't need <laughs> that. I totally I need this caffeinated. Well, no. well, we are in this love. Is a little, I, I've wanted to be sort of a, a co-host. You know that co-host that just sits back and laughs? <laughs> you know, I, I've, I've always wanted to be that, that person. Well, hey. well, well, there you go. Well, we, we, we encourage folks every week because no, it's sorry. Baltimore positive. All serious. If they haven't heard of Sarah <laughs> Heminger and the great work they're doing at Thread, Absolutely. to go to Thread.org. You want to talk and feel good about Baltimore City and transforming this city, please go to thread.org and, and check and it out. And their philosophy is very much uh, a part of what's been my approach uh, as, as a state senator and also as, as we'll talk about as being a mayor, is that we really have um, underinvested in young people and haven't really given uh, a lot of them the kind of path and support that they need. And we have so many families uh, where they are challenged, where we're in poverty, maybe they didn't go to college, to have volunteers and people who are willing to stand in the gap and be those mentors. It's a great model, and they've had a tremendous amount of success. And it shows that if we can take programs like that, put them in the schools, not necessarily it doesn't have to be thread itself, but that model, it, it works. You sound like Don Moeller. I well, mean, Don Moeller is saying as, this. As Nestor knows, I've never been more taken. Uh, I know I can get excited and enthused about things that are making a difference, but I've never been more enthused about any program than I was about thread. And the fact, I think they're now up to about 700 young people. No one's ever left the program, everyone goes to college. Mentors stay with them for 10 years. I mean, when folks are sitting out there and they're in front of their TVs and they're saying, I need to, I need to feel better about myself and my city. Right. Go to thread.org yeah. and get involved. Absolutely. So let's and, talk and about have, you, though. We have just another. There's another great organization <laughs> okay. like that. There's College Bound. Uh, there's Center for Urban Families. There's We're a lot have them all of great. Yeah. Positive, They're yeah. just a Write great, down, great, 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 great I'm groups that are doing fantastic things in Baltimore and even some local community associations that are doing things. And, you know, they're not advertising, but they're, they're doing, uh, you know, peace walks and they're doing after-school conflict resolution. It could be the Quakers. It could be, you know, a neighborhood. Neighborhood Association, as I said, and, and that's just what's really ex exciting about our city is that you have people that really step up uh, when they're needed. Well, I was excited to get you here because uh, the background for us is Don was my high school guidance counselor <laughs> in 1982. <laughs> All right, so Dundalk High School, 1982. So it gives you a little bit of idea. So a year and a half ago, he's running Baltimore County, and I live in the city, and this is before the Fed showed up at Kathy's door. This is six months before that. Just wondering about the future of the city, selling my property. I live downtown. I've worked my whole life for my property. Uh, I own a, a company in the county. I hear the people in the county saying, I'm not coming back to the city ever again because of crime squeegee boys the orioles the ravens i don't want to go to the arena i don't want to go to the harbor i can't go to roost chris for dinner and i hear this from my sponsors and these are the people i've done business with for 30 years i, I really commend you for stepping up long before i stepped up to make a difference for all of you who are running for mayor uh i've been intrigued along this pathway literally i set baltimore positive to have people like you on yeah. to discuss how are we going to change this? And you've gone all in on the platform to, to talk about, yes, we can. Yes, right? absolutely. And that's what it is. I mean, there's the reality of, I, I think about Baltimore is that we are a beautiful place. You know, we, whether it's our people and our people are our best asset. And also, we're just a, a place visually. We have the arts. We have some of the best food. We have the best academic institutions. We have all of these wonderful things. But we also have some heavy wounds, right? So we, we have some long going some trauma, some things that are just really aching at us. And for too long, we've allowed those things to just not be tended to. You know, it's like you can wear a great suit, but if you have a, a, you know, a cancer that you've ignored, it doesn't matter how good you look on the outside. Uh, and also we have this disparity that's historic where we've had communities that have been invested in and communities that haven't been invested in. But the thing is, we are tough people. We have great organizations and individuals, and it's about having leadership and a city government and a leader who's willing to recognize our strengths, 
but also attend to our wounds and to do those together. And that's the kind of mayor I will be. I, will, I am unapologetically proud to be a Baltimorean. It and I also take responsibility for where, where we fall, where we've fallen, where we've fallen short, and we need to look in the mirror and and admit where we've fallen short, and then have the courage to step up and say, "I'm going to do it better." I listen to you talk, and we always learn something uh, on Baltimore Positive. We we say there's never a straight line, and we we have, I have this great belief that folks who rise to leadership positions don't just suddenly magically appear. They developed, they evolved, they came from somewhere. Their belief system came from somewhere. When I listen to you talk, somehow I hear someone who has a sociology PhD <laughs> from Johns Hopkins University. Would I, I be correct? Well, you were yes, not born and were. raised here. You, you, you sort of fell in love I grew up with, in Philadelphia. Yeah, you I'm, fell, I'm a Baltimorean by well, choice. Well, we all like to think that Baltimore is an upgrade in Philadelphia, <laughs> so I commend you on <laughs> at least making that happen. You know. I have to say, there's a lot of similarities, actually. <coughs> you know, the love of neighborhoods, commitment to neighborhoods, great parks. Immigrant background. Immig- Immigrant background, Big time. A factory, and the fact that the factory is built left. by immigrants. Literally. Absolutely, the city, and, and that the that the factories declined, and people's incomes declined, and then you had banking and, and other institutions coming in and replacing that. And cities across the the country are experiencing a lot of the same challenges that we have. But again, we have not had city government that has been willing to be innovative and courageous and frankly uh, the end of corruption the, de- the degree to which people no longer trust city government that, that's the part that, that is what heart hurts my heart the most well, you, you and Nestor are, are kindred spirits for those of you listening in the car we're with state senator Mary Washington from the 43rd district she wants a job change she wants to be mayor we're talking about her vision for the city mm. you Tell us about how you grew up, because yeah. you've got this passion that just yeah. oozes out of you about yeah. the city and about its neighborhoods. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell us about Mary Washington as a little girl, or mom and dad, and what what you learned. What, what yeah. was home yeah. like? Well, you didn't yeah. grow up thinking I'm going to run for to be the mayor of Baltimore. Well, right? actually, I was kind of, I guess I've always been sort of, uh, we joke in my family, um, I'm sort of the president of my family, but my, uh, <laughs> since being a, a little kid, so I'm the oldest of six children. Okay. Uh, we were raised Catholic, went to Catholic school. Um, and uh, my Fiscal, pun- Metcum, Spiri, and all that. Well, good stuff. I, I'm I'm a Vatican II, <laughs> oh, so I didn't. Be- <laughs> Oh, so there's that age thing. Again. You <laughs> see, when I think when I think oldest to six kids, I'm thinking Marsha Brady. <laughs> well, they, we did used to, to to imagine us as being that, but I'm number one. Uh, Greg was the was number one, and that's but I'm number one. Um, and so, yeah, my parents worked, uh, and so I was in charge. And so, from a very early age, I took responsibility. But at the same time, I was guided. Um, I, you know, I had parents involved. My dad took us to places. My aunts and uncles were involved in our lives. And so I benefited and my, my family benefited from a really engaged family. So even when sometimes things were bad economically or there were times when my dad got laid off and, you know, we grew up in the 70s. And so there were things, you know, hospitals consolidated um, or nursing homes closed. And there were t- even though they were, they were educated, there would be times where, you know, the money just didn't go as far. And if you have six kids, even if you have a decent Sure. living is hard. So I grew up knowing that people can work really hard and then circumstances can cause them to not be able to be as effective as they, they want. But you're sort of family unit, right? I mean, literally. Yeah. I mean, you, a, a lot of people in our city don't have that yeah, right they don't now, have right? that. They don't have that, that um, safety net. Right, and then that's where government, that's where we can come in and provide that. So yeah, I I would go to the store um, and go shopping for my mom and make dinner at an early age, and and then that kind of sense of responsibility for my family expanded to my community, uh, whether and then being a community association when I was in college, uh, just trying to build coalitions in different in different people, um, and because I I just have always had a very a wide range of people that I I care about and interests and exposed to different things, I really can see a lot of different points of view. I joke, my dad was a a Republican, my mom was a Democrat, so I would joke and say, so that was interesting. My mom successfully uh, raised six Democrats, although uh, my niece... I was a family during Watergate, just wondering. I had to look around 72. Well, well, you know, that that was a very interesting time. I remember (laughs) I was babysitting uh, during that whole time, but I think he voted, I don't know, I think sometimes he was just being contrary. I think generally speaking... uh, uh, you know, I, I I do remember him vo- voting for Ross Perot. Uh, so he's like, <laughs> so he's, he my wasn't dad's that alone. guy. Yeah, and so my dad was that guy. So uh, we did have discussions. I as voted families. for Ross Perot. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> Don't let that out. 
I was young. So that's well, you, know, you know. So I know. young Mary Washington just got and exposed to arts and the, and the environment and parks and a loving family. Um, and then, but also at the same time, just as my city, there were difficult times in my in my family. Political family times though. Did you go out as a kid and hold a, a, a no, poster? Or no, no, your not at all. Not, okay. Never. They were not. They were not political at at all. It was work. Uh, family, um, we'd have discussions, but uh, I so never did this any at this of point that. Your life was not something considered. I never at sixteen, I, and, and I no, not at sixteen. It was never a path. It was always the work. So it was always about what can I do to improve conditions for myself and the people I care about. And that's even my taking this step to run for mayor. It's not because I want to be that title mayor. It's that I see that what I what what I'm being called to do is to bring people together, to, to challenge us to be our best, to have high standards, uh, to restore integrity and honesty, uh, to, frankly, to an office and a city where there isn't any. And because of my track record, people can trust that what I say is, 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 is my bond. And right now, that, people don't feel that way about the office of the mayor. And that hurts my heart that people, that's such an important uh, position uh, that affects so many people's lives, that has the ability to influence, to, to make change, to persuade, it does not have the authority that it should. And it's because it's been mishandled. And so we need to have a clean break for from everybody who has ever had their hand in the dysfunction that is currently Baltimore City government. And many... Do you and see I'm that in Annapolis? That that. What do you see in Annapolis when, when it comes to being a city resident, right, right who's dealing with things and saying this is my own. I feel this way literally and I like Larry and I like Kiefer and I like people around Larry but I live in the city and if Larry walked in right now I'd say what what have you done for the city like please tell yeah. me yeah, he, he, hasn't, he, he hasn't come on yeah. and if he ever yeah. comes on I and we for, do for keep him, for the like, for our, for our yes, Republican I mean, listeners we do keep emailing and reaching out we But I love wonder to have who the is our advocate where where is the advocacy for the most important part of the state our, that is being overlooked. Our, our city delegation is strong. We, we, you know, for eight years I've been a strong advocate and as a delegate and proud to be a part of our city delegation and then for the last year to be the Senate delegation. But you mentioned, you know, we're coming up on that anniversary of when the feds came in and when we learned about the, big, the corruption. We learned about University of Maryland. Uh, medical system. We learned about all of these things that were happening. I always wonder what did we not learn about? <laughs> who, who got well, away with what? Well, I want to jump in. I want to jump in there, Senator. Because but that's I just to say that it 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 just it really threw a lot of things off the ramp. We were negotiating Pimlico. We were talking about Kerwin. We were doing all these things, and then all of a sudden, it just sucked all the air out of the room, and all the work that we, the goodwill that we were building, it just evaporated. Well, the question I think that Nestor. And, and our listeners often ask, and again, if, if you're out there in your car, we're with State Senator Mary Washington running a very, very energetic campaign for mayor, wants to be mayor. Early vote starts April 16th, if my math is correct, and uh, the election on April the 28th. 28th yep. So we'll talk a lot about that in the next 35 or 40 minutes. You just alluded, though, to something that Nestor has worn me out in phone calls and text messages and discussions over coffees, and that is we're all upset over Healthy Holly and the books and what happened, but is that symbolic of a bigger issue in government, in campaigns, and you're nodding for those who can't see, you're nodding. <laughs> Tell us what it's symbolic, because Nestor believes it is and believes that money's at the root of a lot of this evil. Walk us through that. It, 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 absolutely. I mean... It, we need campaign finance reform, right? Oh. If everybody had the same amount of money to get their message out, then th you have to look at the system. It's set up. There are those of us who are going to say, no, we are not going to take certain money. There are those of us who say no more to pay-to-play politics. Right. But then there's others who, who l allow that to happen or turn, turn, the, other, turn the other way. And there's so some that go to the hotel to support the candidate and buy... Oh, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. So, again, but you're <laughs> absolutely right. It's not just individuals. We have to look at the system that is set up, right? From the, whole, the top from down. The, from the top down. And even the whole creation of the, the original sort of 
semi-privatization of the medical system and then the uh, f you know the former senator i think it was former Delaware that set it up and then the people who benefit from the contracts and we end up seeing some people get get uh, uh caught with the bag but then we miss the driver or you miss the planner you miss the person that has planned the whole well, it thing feels like you're 10 years too late at, at, you know at that point right well again it's never too late to turn the page Right, and well, that's not for the we, city, for not the for the city. city. But I, I mean, to, to 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 catch the criminal, you know. I mean, so it's yeah. it's not about the. We about can change the aftermath. The this is about on April twenty eighth. Citizens like myself, four hundred thousand registered voters, three hundred thousand Democratic voters coming together and saying, "Who do we want to lead us out of this yes. mess? Who is honest? Who is smart? Yes. Who cares about everyone in the city? Who cares about potholes? Who cares right. about bringing?" Right. But all of it is sort of washed away by crime because mm -hmm. that is the perception that the counties see. Right. And I have been a big believer that Baltimore will be fixed when Westminster, Timonium, when they feel comfortable coming back because mm -hmm. Baltimore needs the counties mm -hmm. to survive right. and we need to make Baltimore palatable for everyone. Right. So from a crime perspective, I live at the Inner Harbor. I feel like perception and reality is different. I watch the news, sadly, and I see that. As mayor... The, the crime and the consent decree. Mm -hmm. We've had Police Commissioner Harrison on. Good. Some thoughts about that because that's that's going to be the lead story. That's going to be one, two, and three. Absolutely. Everything else sort of falls in line with that. If you fix crime, you're a good mayor, I think. You you have to you have to do both. You have to do everything. You have to address education. You have to address the underinvestment of education and, and young adults because that affects. You know, if if we have disconnected youth. You know the young the young men that are out there, uh, you know, wiping down windows. Uh, you know, they, there are different groups of them. Some of them are older, uh, underemployed, uh, might have some drug addiction. Some of them are unaccompanied homeless youth, uh, leaving bad situations, and they are trying not to be in the gang. They're trying not to rob anybody. So from their point of view, they're doing something right. But at the same time, it's it's illegal. They shouldn't be out there. It's a dangerous situation for so themselves you, you and everybody I else. So I'm in that camp of saying that I've they had the same man living on my corner for 16 and a half years. Right. Go down there. I saw him on the way here. I, right. I saw him an hour ago. Right. Um, I almost want to ask his name, but I'm not sure the countenance would be there. Mm -hmm. But I, I would, behind every person like that, there's a story. There's a story. But, I, I but it's jump, been 17 so, years. I want to jump back, back to, the, to where the senator was. I, I want yeah. you to finish that thought yeah. because you were saying you put in that the complexity, yeah. education, jobs, all those yeah. other things. You yeah. said, but at the same time, it's illegal. So, yeah, if and we, so I want you to continue. We yeah. sort of jump. Yeah, and so we, so you, so you have to discern what where are there opportunities for the intervention where it's like we can divert and we can you know we're, we're not going to rest our way out of it but we have laws and and we have laws for a reason and if we can believe that the laws are being applied fairly and equitably be equitably then we can have confidence in the in the criminal justice system right now we have a situation when you have a gun trace task force when you have police officers that are found to themselves to be in violation of our own laws and our standards of behavior it it undermines the belief in the system so then when those cases are those folks are arrested and then those cases go to court then our state's attorney is then not able to to have these convictions stand because they were just and they were they were equitable. And so it's all these different pieces and it's not about pointing fingers, it's really about understanding that you can't just uh, say you're just gonna focus on crime. I think p as a candidate, it's, de it's definitely very easy to just have be a one issue candidate and to say that that's the only thing that, that matters. But it's also the, the case that the basic operation of city government doesn't function. When okay. you call City Hall, you don't get an answer. I know you've been when you're trying to pay bills. Yes, when you're trying to pay your bills. We can't we'll even that bill the, the people. second segment, the water bill part. I know you've dedicated a, a large portion of your time yeah, to yeah, that right. specific call. Absolutely. I'm trying to make sure the water's clean. Yes. I'm yes. trying to make sure when I reach for yes. it that it's safe. Right. But part of the part of the responsibility of government is public safety and and and, and decide, deciding what that is. We have to have confidence in the leadership. It has to be transparent and accountable. Uh, as as mayor, I will have crime stat si uh, sessions that aren't just in city hall, just not in Comstat, but will be out in the community because communities can and need to be a part of the solution. So on my website, marywashingtonformayor.com. What is that again? marywashingtonformayor.com. <laughs> With the downloadable <laughs> PDF, I yeah. saw it for myself. Yes, yes, of a proposal that it's not my plan. It's, it's based on research and interview and talking to people, but I want 
feedback because if there are people who live in communities who have great ideas, who've been working on things, and if, if we have a plan that is made up of the people of Baltimore, it's a Baltimore plan, then it doesn't matter who the mayor is, it doesn't matter who the city council people are or who the commissioner is, this is our plan, and so you hold that up as you hold us accountable. And we don't have that accountability. We also, look, you know, my brother's a police officer in Philadelphia, so okay. you might not know that about me. So I know that a lot of people, when they get into this job, they get in t- for all the right reasons. But it's a very difficult job, and they see us at our worst. And so you have police officers that are more or less at risk based on their histories to engage in behavior that is unlawful or that is an outburst of their own uh, trauma or an outburst of their own drug addiction or suicide, uh, you know, behavioral health issues. And so we need to also assess and provide support and training so that they can be the officers that we need. And then from a technological perspective in Baltimore City, they're still writing you know, you get a report and it's still in paper. Uh, one of the things I like about the commissioner's plan is he talks about the need for technology in the cars and that I think he's, he thinks it's about 20% of the time on the street could be returned from being in the office and put back into the street if we just had computers in right. the cars. So we and are already... And neighboring jurisdictions and have they had have that it. for years. And we're it's not like all, it's not all, Star all of Trek. a century. We're a quarter yes. of a century right. into we this. Right. It's yeah. not right. Star Trek. Right, right. Now... now and then that addresses getting, because you know, we do need officers, you know, on the streets, in the communities, but they can't if they're dealing with poor technology, with cars that, where the wheels are falling off. Um, it's, it's, it's just, it's all, it's all together. It's both leadership, it's accountability, it's systems, it's technology, and most of all, it's restoring that trust and the relationship between the communities and police. And I believe if we take that head on, then we can come to our public safety issues, not in opposition to each other, but, but as a team, as, 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 a, as, a, as, a, as a community, knowing that there's a role for law enforcement, knowing that there's a, law for, for educa- uh, a role for educators, knowing that there's a, 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 a role for social workers and the business community, and together we can do this, and you need a leader, and I'm that type of leader that thinks complexly, but also very strategically and builds relationships. You, you know, Nestor, and, and we're, we're going to go to a break, and we're going to come back. We have so much to talk about. But when, when I hear you talk, Senator, I... I think, again, one of the recurring themes on Baltimore Positive is this complex nature of the relationship of the police and the community and the trust and a number of leaders, Governor O'Malley, and the union mayor with O'Malley, the mayor and the former, union. Yeah, former Governor O'Malley too. talking about the importance of constitutional policing, the, the, the police commissioner. We tend to want to say it's either police good, police bad, community good, community bad. Right. It's much more. Th- as we sit here today, two police officers were assassinated over the weekend in New York City. Mm-hmm. That's unacceptable. Your brother mm-hmm. feels that pain mm-hmm. 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 today when he wakes up mm-hmm. and sees that. Mm-hmm. It seems to me the only way out of this, this is my editorial comment, is to we have to build bridges yes. and trust between the police department and our communities. It's the key to public safety. And communities want it. And Even it in makes the police safer and the community yes. safer. As a citizen, yes. I need it. Yes. So right. how are you right. going to, because Nestor, and, then I, I, and I know we're coming up and in, in, in times of the essence here. you got a busy schedule. How, how do you get the players at the table? Because yes. Nestor talks about it. the FOP is in one place. Right. And it's not unusual. They yes. always are. And yes. I have good friends in the FOP. Yes, yes. The mayor and his team are in another place. The chief's in another place. The state's attorney is in another place. Right. So how does this And state, where is the citizen? How does this... And the citizen's in another place. So how does this state... I'm looking at you yes. now. This yes. is it. You're a state yes. senator. Yes. Sociology degree from yes. Johns Hopkins. Yeah. You're smart as can be. How do you bring all these folks Get them together all in the room. and make a safer? Get them all through it. Get them all in the room and like. lock the door. So I'm the, senator. I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the mayor. So I get to hire the police 
commissioner. I have I have a, an economic relationship with the state's attorneys. The, in the past, the state's, the city has contributed to the state's attorney's various projects. Um, the Fraternal Order of Police is the union. I, I reckon, I reckon it's a membership organization. It's not really a union, but it's the representative organization for police as workers. I value that relationship. So as, as and they are my employees. That's important for citizens too. Right, right. yes, right. And I, 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 and also you have to have, there are advocates, you you know, who have been, um, you know, detractors as well as supporters. And so you have to have that, those folks in the room. I've been on record as saying that I will not be an executioner nor an apologist for the police. That this is, this binary is not sustainable and it's not truth. Governor O'Malley called it. He said, policing the police makes the police safer. We can't, the gun <laughs> trace task force makes the police less safe. Yes, absolutely. And so, again, every communities know that. So it is about integration. So when we think about policing, let's think about there's a part of it for law enforcement, but it's also part about what, what can we do to sustain it. Um, one of the ideas uh, that came up in one of the community meetings I've had, I'm saying six meetings to discuss my proposal across the city, six meetings, and one of the, one of the, the proposals is, well, you know, we need to see them as part of the cleanups. Right. We need to see them as part of, you know, not just arresting, uh, but being a part of the community as a whole. Uh, I represent Northeast Baltimore and certainly we we've had challenges, um, but there's also an attempt among the community uh, to have blue night, to to have to have dinner, um, to invite us to do uh, safety walks together. Um, and so those types of things can uh, break down those oppositions, but you also have to have trusted leaders from those communities. So that's where organizations like Safe Streets comes in, Ceasefire, some people that have credibility in that community that maybe they were formerly uh, engaged in that life, and now they've turned their life around. Uh, there's an organization called Force. Um, there's a number of organizations of peer support where they were in the life and they're out of this life. Why have and they, they not been unified? The <laughs> well, you, 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 well, why has a mayor? not brought because we have not together. had the vision and the dedication to innovative and creative solutions that are difficult and complex and not easy to put on a, a campaign slogan but that but they are committed to it and to the, the long-term sustainability of that you have to invest money and you have to invest time it, and it takes energy and you have to be willing to fail have it not work immediately um, and there's too much of a desire to say I'm gonna reduce crime 50 percent I'm gonna do this and then you've made this unreal, unrealistic, false promise, and now your political career is, is at hand. And so rather than being honest with people, like, hey, this is going to take a while. I'm gonna, I want you to be more safe. We're going to get more officers. We're going to make sure that they engage in equitable, uh, effective, and constitutional policing. Because constitutional policing isn't about handicapping the police. It's making sure that the rests that they make are constitutional so then they could hold up in court and so we can get people off the streets get that the need bad to be off the, guys and gals off the streets. But right That's now it's all mixed up. I, I want to hear more. I know it's time for a break. I do. Joan Jett's over my shoulder. <laughs> tells me where Joan Jett's a new visitor. Yeah, yeah, Joan Jett has replaced Chris Cornell. We're at State Fair. We're in Catonsville. <laughs> well, I did not get the chicken and waffles. I went for the uh, chicken on the cob salad here today. We're with mayoral candidate Mary Special. Washington and the state senator as well uh, who's having a uh, caffeine of some kind espresso er, early voting starts april 16th voting on april 28th nestor what do you say democracy is not a spectator sport we are baltimore positive back for more episodes ahead with mary washington right after this from state fair in catonsville